everyone it is official the new york knicks have extended rj barrett four years worth 120 million dollars per woge now obviously the knicks wanted to get a deal done with rj barrett although there were talks and rumors and speculations that rj barrett may be included in the donovan mitchell trade the knicks are actively trying to acquire donovan mitchell and rj barrett was a name that was thrown out there there was even talks that uh, Tibbs preferred keeping Grimes over R.J. Barrett because Grimes is a better shooter and defender than Barrett is. But Barrett has a lot of promise, is still extremely young, is the youngest Knicks player to average 20-plus a game. So there were a lot of positives and benefits when it came to R.J. Barrett. Uh, R.J. Barrett, Donovan Mitchell, yes, you could make the argument Donovan Mitchell is a lot more established, but you have Jalen Brunson, which doesn't make a lot of sense to go after Donovan Mitchell when you have essentially the same player. So keeping RJ Barrett made a lot of sense. And even if you were able to acquire Mitchell, it would be good to keep RJ around as like your wing guy. Although you could use him maybe to trade for a more established guy. It gave you options, right? But now that the Knicks have actually extended RJ Barrett, this causes for a lot of complications with the New York Knicks. Also, based on the reports, uh, the Knicks... Leon Rose basically gave a deadline of today to either get the Donovan Mitchell trade done or to extend R.J. Barrett. And we saw that R.J. Barrett was extended. Now, one of the reasons that this trade becomes extremely difficult is because they now have a poison pill contract. And a quick summary of what that is for people that may not know, it's basically a backloaded contract uh, in the NBA. So like the long-term finances are a lot worse than something that is uh, like now. So for example, if a team was to take on RJ Barrett, um, and this year it might work great for the salary cap, stuff like that, but by year four, uh, they could be in a terrible situation. And throughout the history, uh, based on what I've been able to see, Devin Harris is the only player ever with a poison pill contract to actually be traded, and that happened back in 2008. So that is extremely interesting in and of itself. Now, it doesn't mean it's impossible for the Knicks to go and acquire Donovan Mitchell. Obviously, they want to keep R.J. Barrett, um, and they likely end up trading Grimes or, or another player or several players. So seeing a lot of talk about like, oh, this means that's it, the, that the Jazz aren't going to trade Mitchell to the Knicks, so what's next? Do they trade him elsewhere? Uh, do the Knicks move on? Not necessarily. The New York Knicks could still easily go after Donovan Mitchell. Uh, they have enough draft picks, enough young talent, things like that to make things very interesting. They could still go get him. Problem is, is now, if you're the if you're the Jazz, do you really want to take on uh, R.J. Barrett's contract with the poison pill? Uh, and for example, you might be thinking, well, the Jazz, they're going to have all kinds of cap space. They're a rebuilding team. Why do they care? Because let's say you have two, three, maybe four guys that you really like, that you hit really nicely on in the draft, and now it's coming time to re-sign those guys, uh, and now you're in a position where maybe you can't, or you got to let one of them go, or just, it just, it makes things a very complicated year three, year four of that contract, and the idea is like, if you get RJ Barrett, you want him for the long haul, right? He's not a 33-year-old player. He's still very young. He's going to grow. He's only going to get improved and only going to get better. Um, so it just makes it a lot more challenging. Now, again, they still could take on R.J. Barrett uh, or the Jazz could go and get Grimes in a top in and say five first round picks. Uh, the picks are what seems to be the holdup here, you know, and the asking price for Donovan Mitchell just seems extraordinarily high. Uh, which they are kind of basing it off of, you know, the Rudy Gobert trade where it's like, oh, you know, we got 30 picks in that deal and 10 players. And like, you know, so we, that was Rudy. Imagine what Donovan Mitchell could get us. And it just becomes this like back and forth struggle. Um, and clearly the Knicks had a deadline and they weren't able to get the trade done. So they stuck with Barrett. And like I said, I mean, I, as great of a player as Donovan Mitchell is, I don't know if it's worth it for the Knicks. Like, you know in six months to a year, there's going to be some other disgruntled superstar that wants to be traded, that wants out. And if you're the Knicks, wouldn't you rather use those assets to go get that guy who might complement 
you know, your Jalen Brunson and your RJ Barrett more. Because it's just like you're going to have the worst defensive backcourt in the entire league with Brunson and Mitchell. And look, they are both great. They can both score. They can both do multiple things, but they are undersized. They're both six foot one. Although Donovan Mitchell does have a six ten wingspan, he's still an undersized guard who hasn't played very many much defense, which is actually really surprising because he came into the league known as a defensive guy. Like that was his mo coming to the league, not this scorer that he's evolved into. And so, if you're the Knicks. Like, what's the point? I don't think it's a big deal if the Knicks just don't trade for Mitchell. Let let the Jazz trade Mitchell elsewhere. You know, like, you tried, you threw out an offer, it was a reasonable offer for a guy like Mitchell, and they didn't want to take it. Okay, fine, don't take it. Hold on to your assets. You have a pretty solid team this year. I still don't think they're they're that competitive, but... You, you have a decent team. I do have a lot of questions with Jalen Brunson just because Brunson had a nice, like, eight-game stretch, and that was it. Like, how do we know that he can deliver that night in and night out over an 82-game season? That's going to be a big question, but I feel like Donovan Mitchell is more of an insurance policy in case you don't hit on Jalen Brunson. In case you were wrong with Jalen Brunson, it's like, well, at least we got Donovan Mitchell, and then we can trade Brunson now. I just, I don't know. I I just don't see the logic in it. And I do think that this is kind of a sign that the Knicks are, you know, like not like, hey, we're going a different direction. If you want to come back and you want to, you know, recircle, well, then here you go. You know, this is what we're willing to give you. We gave you a chance to get RJ Barrett because, again, RJ was in the talks for being traded for Donovan Mitchell. And you didn't want it. You didn't want to jump on it. We gave you an opportunity. Well, now we just signed we just signed Barrett to a very lucrative poison pill deal. So do you want to take that poison pill? If you want to, go ahead. Take it. It's yours. But if you don't, then I guess you're going to have to do something else. This kind of gives the Knicks a way to keep RJ now. You know, it gives Leon Rose an opportunity to say, well, hey, look, you sure you want to do uh, that now? We gave you an opportunity. And, it's, and in a lot of ways, it's that leverage play. You know, you had your chance, you blew it. You were playing greedy. We tried to be fair. We gave you a fair offer. You kept wanting more. And now we're done. Now we're not doing this no more. We're, we just signed and extended RJ. So there goes that. And, you know, if you don't want to do the deal, don't do the deal. You know, if you want to go do something else, go do something else. Good luck. You know, because what other team has the assets that we have that are going to trade for Donovan Mitchell? You know, that's a big thing. And RJ, look, RJ is a solid player. I, if I'm the Knicks, personally, this is just me personally, I would rather have RJ over Donovan Mitchell right now based on the team you have as the Knicks. I think RJ and uh, Brunson, if Brunson can turn into that Donovan Mitchell-esque player and kind of continue what we saw in the playoffs, if he can actually be that guy, I think Barrett and Brunson are a perfect pairing to kind of build around. Go get a defensive, you know, 3 and D shooting guard, a defensive, you know, 3 and D combo forward, you know, a guy that can play small forward or power forward that can switch, uh, and then go, and then you have Mitchell as your center, there you go. Like, you know, like you're in a good spot. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, Randall, if Randall can kind of get back into form, uh, then maybe, you know, if he could kind of get back to two years ago, Randall. Which I don't think he really is that guy. I don't think he's as bad as he was last year, but I think he's somewhere in the middle. I don't think he's a you know forty percent triple double guy night in and night out. Uh, I just don't think that. And but I don't think he's the the terrible player and contract he was last year. I think he's I think he's a solid rotation guy. I do think he's overpaid, but you know I, I think you kind of got what you got. And uh, it's just an interesting interesting spot if you're the Knicks. And it's an interesting spot now if you're the Utah Jazz because now you basically got your bluff called and, you know, you thought we wanted this really badly, but guess what? We didn't. Uh, so, you know, if you want to take them, go ahead. If not, then we'll just keep them and we could trade these other guys, which I don't know. I don't, we'll see what develops. But anyway, those are my thoughts and opinions. And as always, I pass a question on you. Let me know yours down in the comment section below. What do you think of this? Do you think that this is like, this is perfect? Do you think this is not? Do you think like, yeah, they, they made a great deal with RJ, got the extension done. Now you got him for the long term. Uh, that was a big question. That was one of the reasons the Knicks 
uh, were considering taking on Russell Westbrook. So that way they could free up some more money to make a R.J. Barrett uh, extension more reasonable. Well, the way that they navigated that was they backloaded the contract, uh, gave him a poison pill contract. So there you go. Like that, that was the way they navigated it. So now the Knicks are looking at it as like, look, we don't need anybody. We don't need the Lakers. We don't need you. We don't need Mitchell. We got Barrett. We got Brunson. And this is where we'll go. This is how we'll handle it. But anyway, however you feel about it, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. That being said, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me know you enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Follow by the bell notification. Stay up to date with all things sports. Join this wonderful community and all of our discussions. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.